This is what I don't like about Islam Makachev. He says that he wants to fight in June or July. But Volkanovski is fighting in February. Dustin Poirier is fighting in March. Armand Sarukian, Charles Oliveira, Justin Gaethje are all fighting at UFC 300 on April 13th. June or July is two to three months away from that. His last fight was in October against Volkanovski where he took zero damage four months ago. He wants to give the next contender two to three months. It doesn't make any sense to me. And these are the reasons why I'm just not a fan of Islam Makachev. Don't get me wrong. He's one of the best. He's pound for pound, no question. But you beat Bobby Green and jumped the line for a title shot. You want it, fair and square. You want it. But now this, like, this is just why I'm not a fan of Islam Makachev. You want to just give these guys two to three months when they're fighting each other, but you're not fighting. You know, you're about to have six to eight months off. Hey guys, welcome to the False Nine Podcast here with episode 195. This is your host, Alvero. Hope you guys are doing well. I do apologize for not posting on Friday and Tuesday. This episode is coming out on Wednesday and uh, it's just lack of content. Um, I could have, you know, tried really hard to make some content, but there was nothing that was getting me excited to talk about. So I just prefer not to post anything and uh, and just kind of wait it off till mid this week, which is why the episode's on Wednesday. So I do apologize uh, to the viewers who do watch consistently so i'm sorry um and this this week is just gonna be one episode and depending on how the weekend goes um you know i, I might just stick to one episode a week right now just because i said the content's kind of lacking uh nothing too much going on uh but you know following next week with the volkanovsky fight and then you know after that so you know that'll pick up and, and we'll be posting twice a week for that um or the following week i, I would say so uh yeah just a quick uh, i guess update on that today's episode is going to be about ufc fight night we had that last weekend we got one coming up i want to talk about islam Chef a little bit and a little bit of Aliyah tapuria and uh you know that'll be the episode for today something short and sweet i hope you guys enjoy it. um so you know last weekend we had ufc fight night um I, for, uh, I mean freak man i already forgot who uh who headlined that but a uh, Mavovev, I don't know how to say his last name. He won on the decision, but the the fight night wasn't uh, too exciting. the The most exciting part for me on that card or, or that fight night was uh, Moicano calling out MMA Guru. You know that was pretty funny, and you know him talking crazy. You know talking about how his dad just had a kid and he's like sixty six years old. So uh, and he's talking about how he's gonna go home and make one. Yeah, so that that to me was the most exciting thing of UFC fight night. Um, so kind of kind of a, a a slow night you could say and this weekend uh we do have what's his name uh joe pfeiffer and, and jack hammerson or yeah hammerson hammer him hammerson i don't know hammerson hammerson um and, and joe pfeiffer going at it the main main event on on saturday so that'll be an exciting fight a little bit more exciting i think than uh last week's and then uh, uh next weekend we do have the vulcan alia and in that card itself so I think this fight night is going to be a, another kind of chill, slow night. I'll be watching, trying to learn the fighters uh, and, the, yeah, just the fighters and, and how they fight. And the main event should be very exciting and entertaining. So, yeah. Um, so that's really it about UFC fight night. And then uh, I, I now I want to move on and, and kind of transition towards uh, Islam Makachev. I've made a lot of videos now of Islam Makachev, and they seem kind of hating or, or whatever. But uh, he's recently came out and made another statement how he wants to fight in June, July, and they want to take the belt away from him, right? And, and before I get started on, on this conversation, just want to say, you know, I don't hate on, I don't hate Islam. I don't, I don't have anything against Islam at all. I think he's pound for pound, one of the best fighters on the UFC roster, no question, around the world, no question. To me, has the best striking in the UFC, like the best striking if not one of the best. So whatever I'm about to say is going to seem like I'm hating on Islam, but trust me, like I'm not, uh, I'm just trying to make a point and why I'm not really a fan or convinced of Islam Makachev. But again, to remind you guys right now at this moment, I do think he's pound for pound and he has one of the best strike in the UFC striking in the UFC. So, you know, he goes and says that statement that he wants to fight somebody in June or July. But, you know, his last fight was in October against Volkanovski. He was supposed to fight Charles Oliveira. You know, that got canceled, so he ended up fighting Volk. Volk took the fight on a late notice, 
and he made some statements about that. Um, and and he won a first round uh, knockout, if I'm not mistaken, first or second round knockout. Barely took any damage, and now he's saying that he wants to fight in June, and July. You know, October. I mean, from October you got November, December, January, February, which we're now February. It's four months now since he's fought. February, March, April, June. You know, that's what, seven months, eight months if he fights in July off. You know, and and you have Volkanovski fighting next weekend. You know, I'm not saying that he's going to fight Volk next, but I'm just bringing it up because Volk wants that fight. He wants the title at 155. So there's Volk. He's fighting in February, and he fought in October against his long guy. His ass knocked out. Dustin Poirier wants to fight, uh, you know, potentially if he wins against uh, Bonit or St. Dent, St. You know, Bonit, or I don't know how to say that last name, but what if Dustin wins? He's fighting in March. And then you have Armand, Charles, and Justin Gaethje all fighting at UFC 300 uh, in April. You know, and when you look at it like that, where wh- who's the real contender for Islam Makachev? You know, and if I go into order, I would say it's uh, right now, uh, with, before Justin got the knockout, it was Charles. But now I would say it's Justin Gaethje, Charles Oliveira, and Armand Sarukian. So if Justin wins against Max, I think he should be next for, for Islam. But I don't see Justin taking a fight. You know, he fights in April, and then he's going to turn around and come back and fight in June or July. I can see him fighting like September, but June, July is just too soon. You're giving those guys two to three months when Islam has taken four months off now. So that's kind of where I have an issue with Islam. I know he says that he's fight, he had an injury, but now he hasn't spoke about that injury. And it doesn't seem like he was injured because of what came out after that. You know, there was uh, stories that were posted of Islam where he was doing gymnastics and he was hiking some mountain or just hiking in general. Um, So, you know, I I just asked myself these questions like, I don't know, man, it just don't sit right with me. And then on top of that, when we look at Islam or when I think about Islam and his career, and what he's done in the UFC, he fought a Bobby Green, Bobby Green, you know, ranked top 15. So he's like ranked 13, 12, you know, bouncing around in the late, in the, the later, in the late rankings, whether it's 12, 13, 14, or 15, beats Bobby Green, and then automatically just fights Charles Oliveira. Beats Charles, not fighting that. But when have we seen that happen? It happens every now and then, right? But when have we seen that happen where a guy fights a, a 13, 14th guy, beats him, and then is fighting for the title next? No Fazeev, no Gamrot, no Benil Derouche, just straight into the to title fight. I mean, he did it, and we all knew he was capable of doing it. But, you know, that to me is just like, bro, that's just so unfair to everyone else in the division, right? You know, you ask yourself, will Charles beat, you know, Justin, Dustin, uh, Tony Ferguson? Who else did he beat? Fuck, I think that's about it. But if I miss uh, Chandler, Chandler, whatever you want to say, and... You know, Charles does all that, loses to to Islam, and then Islam wants to make his first title defense against a 145-er. Obviously, he's a huge 145-er, but still someone that fights at 145, which is Volkanovski. And then he arguably, you know, people have mixed emotions about that fight, whether he won, whether he lost. You know, a lot of people feel different ways. Um, You know, I've made it pretty clear how how I felt about that fight. But, um, you know... That's your first title defense is, is someone outside the division. You know, then you have you know, a scheduled fight against Charles, which we're all looking forward to that rematch. Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't happen. He's hurt. And they need to they need to fill in. A re- they need to find a replacement against Islam. And, you know, like I said, Islam is one of the best. No one's going to want to fight Islam on a late notice. No one's going to want to fight Islam. Justin didn't do it. Apparently, Dustin was up for it, but they didn't give it to Dustin Poirier, which I would have loved to see. Uh, you know, and they asked Volk to do it, and, and Volk did it. You know, uh, and I get it. That's part of the business. They wanted to see that fight again because it was so close the first time. But realistically, I mean, we were all delusional that Volk was going to win that fight. And then Islam goes and destroys Volkanovski in the first round knockout. So that's been, okay, that's his uh, third title fight, second title defense against the same guy. Hasn't fought Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, Michael Chandler, Armand Sarukian, 
you know, Benil DeRouge, Gamra, Rafael Faziv, you know, those are all guys in that division that arguably could be fighting for a title shot. And he hasn't fought. Neither. Just Charles Oliveira. Right? You know, whether Charles Oliveira was having a bad night or Islam just got the best of him. And a lot of you guys might say, oh, well, Islam's going to de- beat him. He's going to destroy him. And, and maybe you're right. I can see Islam beating all those guys that I just mentioned. But the thing is, you know, when what makes... You know, a run, a title run, a title reign so magical and, and, and just like, I don't know, man. It, it's like a an aura. It's just like, wow. It's because, you know, you, you go back to back to back title fights, title defenses, just back to back to back. Like what Izzy did, what Khabib did, what John Jones did. What Volkanovski is doing, you know, at 145. Like, that's when you look at a guy and be like, crap, like, this guy is fucking good. You know, when he has those back-to-back title offenses, when he stays in his division, just beating up every contender that's next in line. Volkanovski is doing it, or has done it. Um, John Jones, like I said, Anderson Silva, Israel Adesanya. Like, we've seen those guys. Khabib. Kamara Usman, that's what makes those guys, that's why we like those guys so much because how many times they fought in a title fight and how many times they defended the title and not just that, delivered on magical nights, beautiful knockouts, beautiful submissions, wars with the, with their opponent, which whoever it was. That's why we, at least that's why I, you know, enjoy a fighter so much or that's why I become a fan of a certain fighter because, of, you know, those back-to-back you know, killer fights, you know, and just delivering. And that's why, you know, Islam Akachev hasn't done that. And he doesn't need to, right? But that's why I, I give him such a hard time because, I like, bro, Islam, I just want to see you fight killers, bro, in your division. I just want to see you get get a, get after it. Why are you talking about fighting Leon? Why are you talking about, you know, Volkanovski? Like, bro, you only beat Charles Oliveira, they're still Dustin, Justin, Chandler, Gamera, Rafael Fazif, Benil Derouche, Armand Sarukian. There's still those guys that could you be potentially fighting at 155. Those are all guys that could, are, are really, really good and can give you a run for your money. You know, and, and, and yeah, maybe on their best night, they can maybe get the best of Islam Agachev. But let's say, you know, if Islam goes and fights these guys like that just gives him so much like stock like he just becomes like bro like he is him he beat all those guys and more and then he moved up you know and 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 took over this division if that's what he wants to do and that's what i feel like is missing from islam and people talk about him like he has accomplished that like he's done that uh people put him on that pedestal and i'm like man let's not forget he's only fought one uh top five guy you know and it wasn't even he hasn't fought anybody in his he hasn't defended his title against anybody at 155 and, and you guys might say oh volkanovsky volkanovsky doesn't fight at 155 bro he hasn't defended his title his first title defense against a 155 is going to be this year this year, man, and he's been champion. He's going to be champion over a year soon. So it just, I'm just like, bro, like, I don't know, man. And that's why I'm just so, so against it. Um, And, and when we look at these other fighters' records, you know, you look at Armand, his last fight, Benil Derouche, he has fought in Gamera. He lost to Gamera what, a year ago, a few fights ago, too. And then you look at Justin Gaethje. He fought Dustin Poirier, fought Fazeev, lost to Oliveira, has fought Chandler, lost to Khabib, has fought Tony. Like, those are his recent fights for Justin Gaethje. And now he's fighting Max Holloway. And that's why we love Justin Gaethje, because of those fights. And you look at Dustin Poirier. He's fighting Bonit St. Dennis, a fucking killer. He's, he just fought Justin Gaethje, got knocked out. He fought Chandler. He fought Charles. He fought Connor. you know. And then he fought, you know, Dan... And, and Khabib, like those are the reasons. Like that's why we like Dustin Poirier, because and then he does good against these guys, be piecing up people up. Charles Oliveira, 
He's fighting Armand next. He beat uh, Benio. He lost Islam. He beat Justin. He beat Dustin. He beat Chandler. He beat Tony. That's why we all love Charles Oliveira. Because of those runs and, and those people that he's beaten. You know, and Armand Saruki and being the new guy in the division that it looks like he's going to be champion one day, whether it's now or in a few years. Like, that guy's building up a pretty good resume as well. And you look at Islam Akachev's resume, man. And, and who do you have? Bobby Lee and and Charles Oliveira? And again, I'm not trying to hate on Islam. But it, it just, when he says certain things, I just don't get it. He fought Volkanovski, right, twice. 145. He beat Charles, Bobby, Dan Hooker, and then other guys that I don't want to mention. But, you know, pretty... Decent names, right? Drew Dober's in there. Uh, who else was in there? Thiago Moises, Davy Ramos, Armand Sarukian, a few years in 2019. So about, what, four years ago? Um, so, like, you, you look at the champs' record resume, and you look at the contenders' resume, and it's just like, how is it that the contenders or, or the rank guys have a better resume than the champ? It just doesn't make sense to me, and I don't get it. Again, not trying to hate. I just want to put this out there, you know, because, like, people, like I said, people talk about Islam, like, he's up here, but I'm like, bro, let's let's just be for real, you know? So that's all I really want to say about Islam. Um, and, again, I just want to see him do good, man. Like, I just want to see him take over and really be about that life, you know? His, his followers, his fans talk about, like, He's this crazy beast. All right, man, let's fucking see it in action. Let's see it, you know? So let's move on to another another guy, Aliyah Tapuria. And, guys, I'm just being, like, fucking real, you know, about all this stuff. I like UFC, and I like these fighters. I'm a fan uh, of most of them, you know, and I just want to see him do amazing, you know? So I'm not trying to hate. Aliyah Tapuria, a guy with a lot of potential, a lot of potential, but kind of disrespecting the champ, disrespecting Volkanovski. He has it on his Instagram bio, you know, something champ. I hadn't really looked at it, but, you know, he talks about that. Uh, he talks about how, you know, he's just going to mess up Volkanovski. Uh, and just really, really confident. He has shot a little commercial, you know, talking about how he when he becomes champion, he wants to, you know, have, have a fight in Spain at the Santiago Bernabeu. You know, all these things, right? Which is amazing, which is awesome. But let's not forget who Volkanovski is and what he's done in the division. Um, And it's just like, it kind of feels, and obviously Ali is confident, but being overly confident, it's like, are you trying to cope for something else? You know, are you really, do you feel the pressure? More now than ever. The fight's in a few days, a week and a half from now. Uh, to me, it's starting to feel like he's trying to convince himself. You know, really convince himself that he's in, supposed to be in there and be Volkanovski. Don't get me wrong. He's supposed to be in there and fight Volkanovski. He's a true contender. But to say that you're going to, like, do something to Volkanovski, like, you know, mess up his face, knock him out. And I'm like, man, first of all, Volkanovski has a fucking chin on him. He got knocked out for the first time ever in his last fight because he took the fight on a late notice. Was it 10-day notice? Um, you know, there's a video that I saw this weekend or this week about him getting caught by Yair and just ate it. Just ate that shot. It's crazy. So, I, you know, Aaliyah wasn't able to completely put out Josh Emmett into, what, the fourth round? He beat the shit out of Josh Emmett. And Emmett's a tough guy, you know, but... It took you four rounds. And I was like, you think, you? Th I don't know, man. You give Volkanovski four rounds. I just don't see you doing the same damage. And if you can't make that damage, I just don't think you got it, bro. Don't get me wrong. He's a beast. He's a crazy boxer. Pretty, really good. Re pretty good wrestler. But I just think he needs to respect the champ a little bit more. Respect Volkanovski because you don't want to be in there and be surprised. By Volkanovski. Don't get me wrong. It's good to be confident. It's good that you have that mindset. You know, what is it called? Uh, what is it called when you wish it did something into existence? Uh, I forgot what the word is that I'm looking for. But it's good to do that. You know, I do that. I, I 
you know, I want to accomplish these things with the pod and, and my career, things like that. And I get it. He wants to do the same thing. He wants to be champion one day and, and want to be Volkanovski and be Max Holloway and be all these other guys in the division. Um, but it's manifesting, right? He's manifesting, which is good. It's good. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but you got to respect the champ, bro. And the thing is that this champ is experienced. He's been in fights. He's been in wars. Has beaten the best of the best. Has fought with the best of the best. And besides the knockout, he looks like he's won a lot of his fights. And and he's just he just looks so clean in there, man. And and it's hard to see, you know, someone like Leah or just anyone in that division to to beat Volkanovski. You know, Islam barely did it the first time. Could you imagine if we see Aliyah Tapuria versus Islam Agajev? Like, how would that fight go? That fight don't last two rounds. You know, and Volkanovski went five rounds with them. So, I just, I feel like he's going to get humbled. Um, and I feel like when he fights Volkanovski, when he's in there with Volkanovski, I think he's just going to feel something he's never felt before. You know, he's going to get hit shit with shit that he hasn't felt before, he hasn't seen before. Volkanovski is going to find different angles, weird angles, and, and he's going to kind of, you know, not fuck you up, but he's going to make you hesitate. He's going to take away your confidence. And when you're overly confident like that and you get hit with fucking reality, it's a scary, scary place because you got to make decisions on the fly. And if, you, you know, you start folding because you thought you were so confident, you thought wait, things were going to go a certain way. Now they're not going this a certain way. And now you don't have a game plan. Now you're not prepared for that. So, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's good that he's confident, but, you know, being overly confident, I think could be dangerous when you're fighting number one, number two, pound for pound. Um, someone that's going to go down as one of the best in the division in the UFC, someone that's going to be in the GOAT conversation, you know, like that's who we're speaking of. And Aliyah is putting in his bio that he's going to be the champion. So, I don't know, man. I think he's going to get humbled, but, you know, we'll do those predictions next week, and uh, we'll be watching fights, guys, on the live. You know, I've been going live, I think, twice last week. I'll try to go live a few more times this week and and, and watch those fights with you guys, you know, Volkanovski and Aliyah. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, guys, I have a Discord link on the description and obviously the YouTube channel, stuff like that, and the socials. But, guys, I want to get more involved with you guys on Discord. You know, we don't have to talk UFC. We can talk football. We can talk soccer. You can talk other sports. Um, or, and just have a good-ass time. So make sure you, uh, you know, click that link if you want to basically get involved and kind of build a community with me. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week and ha are having a pretty good week. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.